When formulating a high-intensity training program, the first thing to do is arrange the exercises in their proper sequence. It is a physiological fact that during exercise, the larger muscles of the body demand more energy than the smaller ones. It is advantageous, therefore, to work the largest muscles first, early in the workout, when more energy is readily available. From there, you can proceed to work the other major muscle groups of the body in descending order from the largest to the smallest. The leg muscles constitute the largest muscle masses of the body. The quadriceps and the hamstrings are predominant. Below the knee, we have the gastric nemius muscle, better known as the calves. The next largest masses of the upper body are the various muscles of the back. This includes the trapezius muscles of the upper back and neck, and the latissimus dorsi, which is responsible for the popular V-shape appearance. Next in descending order of size are the pectoral muscles of the chest. There are actually two major muscle masses associated with this one muscle group, pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. The next muscle group down with respect to overall size are the front, side, and rear portions of the shoulder area. The three major muscles, or deltoid heads, which allow freedom of movement in all directions, are the anterior deltoid, the lateral deltoid, and the posterior deltoid. The triceps and biceps are the predominant muscles of the upper arm. The triceps, comprised of three heads, make up two-thirds of the total mass. The biceps are comprised of only two heads, but draw more attention than other body parts despite their relatively small size. Pay close attention to the order of your workout. Abdominal muscles should be worked last in order to provide a winding down effect at the end of your workout. To ensure that the entire muscle is worked, it is important that you perform all of the exercises through a full range of motion. You must move from a fully extended position to a fully contracted position. Once the fully contracted position is reached, pause momentarily before lowering the weight slowly back to the starting position. If a momentary pause is impossible while the muscle is in the fully contracted position, the weight is too heavy you should be able to hold the weight in a fully contracted position. As you continue to move the weight into the second half or negative phase of the repetition, you must remember to slowly lower the weight to the point where the muscle is fully extended. Keep in mind, what you are after is the activation of as many muscle fibers as possible. The key is to obtain a full contraction, as well as a full extension of the muscle at work. There is nothing magical or mysterious about this. In order for a resistance exercise to be productive, muscular involvement must be at a maximum. By performing a repetition too rapidly, the momentum will reduce muscular involvement. Try to execute all of the exercises in a controlled, deliberate manner. The positive phase of the repetition or raising of the weight, where muscle contraction takes place, should last two to three seconds. In the completely contracted position, Hold the weight momentarily, and then lower the weight slowly. The negative phase, or lowering of the weight, should take close to four seconds to complete. Repetitions performed in this manner will apply resistance through a full range of motion, thus ensuring balanced development along the entire length of the muscle. You should avoid fast jerky repetitions. Aggressive overload is the cornerstone of an effective weight training program. Add more weight do more repetitions. This is how you continue to improve. If you persist in handling the same amount of weight for the same number of repetitions, you'll never progress. Your muscles will have no reason to grow bigger and stronger. Recommended is the following method of progressively overloading the muscles. First, choose a weight for each exercise which barely allows the performance of eight repetitions in perfectly strict form. As you continue to train to failure, your strength and size will undoubtedly increase. When you have progressed to the point of being able to perform 12 repetitions, add about 10% more weight to the bar or stack. Your goal again being a progressive increase of intensity and workload placed on the muscles. It is absolutely essential to warm up properly before engaging in any intense physical exercise. This acts as a safeguard against possible injury. Recommended are various stretching movements, including 
head rotation, toe touching, seated leg splits and squats. Spend no more than 10 minutes engaged in warm-up activities, then move immediately to the workout so as not to lose the benefits of the warm-up. Further specific warm-up action will occur within a particular muscle group during the first several reps of an exercise. When engaging in various stretching movements, you should not force yourself into the stretch position. Doing this will elicit a nerve impulse which will cause your muscles to contract. Instead, you should gently stretch into a comfortable position and hold it for several seconds until your muscles relax. Then gently stretch a little further until you feel sufficiently loose and prepared. Now let's get back to the workout itself. Here now is a basic three-day routine meant to be performed every other day with a two-day rest on weekends. It is a full body workout that can be used by athletes, bodybuilders, and anyone interested in increasing overall strength and fitness. As a basic routine designed to work all the major muscle groups, it can be used by even advanced trainees with positive results. Intense training is purposeful behavior aimed at the goal of increasing muscular size and strength. In order to train as hard as possible, you must retain a clear image of your purpose. Once your goal is sharply but realistically defined, all that remains is carrying out your plan. Don't, however, worry about your individual potential. Potential is only the expression of a possibility, something that can be assessed accurately only in retrospect. In other words, You'll never know how good you might have become unless you try. So let's get with it. <laughs> 